Okay, legit. I think we're good to go on this one. Oh snap. Let's go ahead and readjust that. It's there. Okay. Dinner. Okay. Then we're set. Alright. Let's do it. Oops. There we go. Alright. Oh. Alright, welcome back everyone. This is uh, part 2 as we kind of accidentally ended stream early today, especially this morning, because I accidentally hit the shortcut key for, my, for ending my recording when I was trying to click on some of the units. So, ended up, uh, of course we ended up defeating the ban of Indians uh, that were left and of course the the result was pretty gnarly because I kind of fast forwarded it a bit um, because I was in a rush uh, to meet up with a couple of friends of mine and so after this finally loads uh, this was the result I think originally we had at least 45 men I want to say so we ended up losing at least roughly 27 men uh, in the process and 30 of this men and the Jamestown settlers the morale is pretty low so this also brings up a good point so let's say your units are all wounded so you can just control A to then replenish and also you want to make sure of the cost as well so in this case this is 483 uh, gold in this case fortunately we have enough funds to cover all those so we click this uh, replenish button which would then it would take at least probably one to two years uh, or two turns before it fully recovers and we would probably this piece put this uh, to this turn because the main objective is to take care of this region capital right here uh, before we end chapter right so over here we'll just quit Okay, so this is the end of our limits. I guess we recruited too much of uh, the colonial militia. So we'll just make do with what we have and just quickly end turn here. Let's see. Just make sure everything is all good. Alright, cool. We're all good. And now that we have ended turn, on this one uh, basically all we have to do now is uh, make sure that we group up all of our units and we should be good to go and we'll just head over to the last remaining spot before we end chapter here <laughs> and just keep in mind that of course if you don't end up if you don't conquer this uh, the Pennsylvania territory you will basically won't be able to go to the next chapter so <laughs> And remember, this is just a game. Uh, it's not necessarily real life, of course. But um, some part of the history does align to it. I am, I guess they and Sega made it as realistic as possible in this case. So let's see what else we have. Okay, currently have some of the colonial militia available. So quickly transfer it, spacebar to fasten forward. And then we'll go ahead and group up. So currently they are probably building or upgrading a construction, which is a horse breeder in this case, which converts the populace to animism and recruitment capacity units in training is plus two. And the Indian units, when they're defending, they have a lot more than the colonial side, unfortunately, uh, because I think it's just to compensate for the military strength. Uh, quote unquote. So, and plus, they only use 
uh, pitchforks in this case uh, for those that are defending. And we'll quickly reunite with them. And I think that's... We can hire more Jamestown settlers, I guess. It does... I, sometimes quali uh, quantity makes a difference, uh, especially during the colonial times. Uh, because what the military relies on at this time of era is basically the amount, the volley of fire. Uh, basically, since they used muskets and muskets were inaccurate at that time, uh, musket balls would then be used as ammunition. So that's why they will have more people fire the ammunition all at once or the musket ball all at once so that you can increase the chance of hitting someone in this case. So at this moment, we'll go ahead and quickly bring up more of our unit. And just a heads up, if you do end up uh, putting your unit, your extra unit close to uh, wherever the main unit is at, it will end up uh, being, it will act as if it was a, another ally. So it will then reinforce you from an opposite direction. Uh, sometimes if you're lucky, it gets close to your own army formation or your main army formation, but sometimes it doesn't. So you have to keep that in mind as well. So we'll go ahead and quickly put all of our units. Okay, I guess we end up having to fight them on the field. So we currently have uh, more men than the opposing forces. So we'll go ahead and do this. And sometimes if I use autom automatic, it really kind of messes up the result because it basically you're giving the possibility of even having a, a lot of men um, get killed in the process because of the AI uh, or the automated uh, random uh, result so it was uh, random result button I suppose so just keep that in mind All right, so here we are. So this is the opposing force. Normally, with the if the aggressor in this case, would, which will be well, technically us, I guess, uh, will, uh, if we were in defense, we would normally have some sort of barricade to do so. And I'm just going to quickly speed up the process because this might take a while. Uh, I normally would slow down just to enjoy the effect. And you can always... Um, realign it for me personally i will probably just like wait until the opposing force come within the range and most of the time a lot of the enemy gets shot down but i think in this case i'm probably going to slow down a bit and just make sure that i have some units available to uh, at least cover this side of the area because uh the possibility of them trying to flank is really high in this case, so I'm trying to also... And you can also lump them up as well, so if you just click on multiple units and they click on here, you can do all at once and they'll march forward as well. So it seems like the first unit has already fired here. And you can just see how realistic it gets. Um, CGI effect. Okay. And we'll just quickly try to at least take care on that side I think that's the general as well so uh, we'll quickly try to reposition it okay I think we're good okay now they're look looks like they're going for melee now and hopefully we'll be able to fire just in time and they are on the missile attack combat and slightly losing and they are going for the melee as well. So we're just going to go ahead to go melee as well. Just in case. And then we'll go back to resume fire. Fortunately we have toggle uh, fire at will in this case. So quickly try to target that down. And bring up our units a little bit more. Uh, later on when you have better technologies, advanced fire or... Uh, the tri volley fire, basically one line ducks, one line fires, ducks down, reload, second line fires, ducks down, reload, and third line fires and duck downs reload. That's a lot more effective later on, so just keep that in mind. 
as we progress, and that'll be the best uh, technology you're ever gonna get. Uh, especially against the British, because the British at first they have, uh, when you later on fight against them in the Road of Independence campaign, you will definitely see more of those techniques being used, uh, especially in early game too. So just be aware of that, uh, especially if you're fighting against them. And I think they are they're rounding for the moment, so I definitely need to prepare again, just in case that they do end up attacking, which they will. And we're currently trying to bring them down to at least 40 plus men at least. Because the issue with them is this. So if you bring them down to you bring them down to at least 50 and you let them run away, they will re regroup again. Like for example, rounding combat and losing slightly, and then they're gonna regain confidence again and try to charge back again. So just like these two groups here, which is the Palatine Warriors. Uh, so we're trying to at least make sure that we take care of them. I think mean, I don't know if this is the general side though, but I guess we'll try to actually we're gonna make sure we clobber them. And I think we got most of them, so we'll quickly uh, try to cut them off. At least a couple of them are the only damage so now we will just go ahead and try to surround them a little bit further away. And let's see how much we can take down on this one. Because um, they might because later on we're gonna be facing the rest of them, which is the both uh, since they'll be on the defending end, they'll have a lot more people involved. And these units can become a little bit of more of a hassle. But I guess we won't be able to catch them since I don't have cavalry. And once they settle down and reformed up, uh, normally the range will be gone by now. So it's technically kind of pointless. And in this case, right now I have some settlers uh, available. So we'll definitely be able to at least regroup up. Again. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so yeah, uh, this is the result. We at least did kill at least 170 of the Indians and 34 of them uh, killed uh, of our men were taken down. And if you click on this metal part, uh, you can see which one gained experience or which one uh, was able. Yeah, basically which one uh, gained some experience and most of them did, except for these two regiments right here. But and you can also see how many kills were there, uh, how many were remaining, and how many losses were uh, there, and what was the exact deployment, and mostly it was like 80, and there were 77 remaining for John Smith Band, which is the general army in this case. So yeah, and let's go ahead and continue forward. So right now, they have fresh new units actually in there, so... Oh, I took down only one third of it actually, I just realized. <laughs> I don't think I have, let me just quickly see which one I need. Okay, this one needs to be, I could go forward with it. Let me just, nope. Uh... Your region capital is the central city for control of the region. Recruitment capacity, units and training, one converts the populace and of them. You know what, can I just? No, you can't raise it. Uh, that's the issue. Okay. This, and then it, this arrow key, you can actually check. Uh, you can easily teleport back to uh, the specific target. Or not specific town, I guess. Uh, if you ever need to do upgrades or some sort. And over here, if you click on 
the specific territory like Maryland, you can see how much uh, what's the growth. And in this case, it's negative six at the moment, and you got minus one hundred eighty percent because due to forced food shortages as well, uh, which is terrible. So we better end it soon before our economy just like tanks. Um, I haven't seen our economy tank at one point, but uh, it's a little bit risky. But this time, I think they're they have a lot more in this case. Then I forgot how many medicine men is in each unit. Maybe like around fifty or forty. So if it's 150 and then maybe like 100, I guess. I don't know if it's 100. 200, let's say 200, 350, uh, plus that 450 right here, plus the remaining units that we already dispersed, that brings up about maybe, I already decimated at least 133 of them. So I can't say maybe like, let's say 100 or so. So that's a total of 500. And over here, we only have like... We barely have enough, so we got 150 right here, uh, 80, so that's 230, 275, 275, plus uh, 340, 353, no, yeah, 353, and plus uh, that is like 420, 430, 430, yeah, 430, 430. I mean, we can execute it. We can try that. Oh, because they're going to be reinforcing either way. So we'll, if we can take down most of their units, we can try demanding surrender. And if they do end up surrendering, we will take Pennsylvania. But most likely they wouldn't. So you're most likely going to see an all-out war on this one. And yeah. Oh, actually, we can take them down. I just realized they only have 190. Uh, this is a little bit risky, so I'm not going to do this. Alright, so let's go ahead and continue forward with it. Um, I think starting, maybe if we have enough time next week or so, we'll be able to probably be able to do one of the other campaigns. Uh, this one will be a lot more massive i would say because since we're going to be fighting against a fighting against a fort so you guys will be able to see what it like what it's like to fight against the fort uh for offenses so to speak so let's go ahead and see where we're at at the moment and so this is where we're at so also keep in mind you see like the red borderline uh this is where this is like the exist this is like the boundary that you can't go through and I guess um, this is the road. No, this is still another berry. Okay. So let's see what we have here. Uh, I'm just going to position. There you might be around here-ish. I, I can't say for certain. So we'll just quickly do that. Oh, wait. I just realized. So I'm going to hide it. Do a little surprise there. I do a line of fire actually, and then just make sure that they're hidden. Oh wait, they're idle. Uh, I thought normally they will hide. Uh, be able to hide. hidden, hidden, hidden. Nope. <laughs> normally they will be hidden. Wait. Back. Let's see, can hide in woodland, can hide in light scrub, okay. So, where can you hide now? Oh my gosh. Okay, I guess they can hide. So, what we'll do is this we'll just do one single fine line in this one. Uh, actually, no, we're not gonna do that. I'm gonna use two of them, three of them as a backup position here, and it should be good. Yeah, okay, so this one they're trying to use it, use it as a bait, the medicine men. Uh, the bowman over there so we'll go ahead and send two of our units just trying to get over there i don't know what tricks they have in particular but i'm sure they won't be able to at least attack it okay i'm gonna send another additional two units probably there's some oh okay i see okay so there's at least two of them 
two group of bowmen right there. Okay. So we'll try to send another third group over there. And the regiment over here just gonna try to protect this flank. Then the Virginia colonists can at least protect this middle gap here. And just in case, uh, John Smith can be placed right here as well. Then we'll go ahead and initiate the attack right here. And I think they were hidden. Yeah. No? Someone hidden? No? Okay. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and see what's the Bowman's port in the view. Oh, dang. They're getting shot at. Okay, wait. This is the slow mo. Oh, not even slow mo, yeah. This is the regular place. Hey, okay, I can imagine just like getting shot at. Wait, now we're really out of range. I just realized. We just like close in a little bit more. Are they firing? Oh, they are. Nope, they're coming to our A. Okay, there's a barrage of fire right there. Volley fire. Bowman. Oh, looks like the. Oh, Palatin Indians. Okay, just in case. Gonna have a melee as well. Oh, they're currently under missile attack. Oh, okay, there we go. We'll go ahead and try to at least cover that side. Okay, we're gonna take care of that. Gonna close up the flank right there. Surely, gonna. Normally, if they have like a hill position, technically they have the upper advantage. But it's all right. We'll quickly close in the gap a little bit more. Okay, let's go for it. We're just using like minimal amount of. Uh... Oh, which one? Which one has the most units? Twenty-six. Twenty-six. Okay. Twenty-three. Bring it down. Okay, let's take down a little bit more of there. See, we can quickly get that into the firing range. Uh, I don't have enough range. Okay, let's quickly charge up. Normally, if you sprint, sometimes you might be able to catch up and also get in range as well. Uh... Hopefully I have enough time to do that. Okay. Oh, nope. I don't have enough time. Alright. That's about it. Alright, so this was the result. We at least took care of at least 99 of their men so far, so that's not too bad. Uh, I think the only one thing they'll consider that as a defeat for them. Alright, so let's go ahead and head right into it. Alright, so currently we have some Tatter army and I think... Nope, we won't be able to do any siege at the moment. 
during a siege, your yeah, so the, the sometimes you can starve up the army uh, within them, and they sometimes would surrender, depending on the campaign as well. And in this case, they probably won't. So let's just go ahead and... Actually, before I do that, let's see if they surrender. Surrender refuse? Okay, we'll just go ahead and try to starve them. Then we'll have another unit available, and we'll just see which one they... So currently, we'll go ahead and try to see what happens. Normally, it'll probably take another two turns of some sort uh, before they actually start fighting again. So, see, yeah, bunch of mobs. Yeah, so mobs are always uh, what frightens me at times. So we'll try to like at least reduce them. Okay, they surrender. Yeah. So yeah, that's basically it. Now I'll let the AI do the talking in this case. Exempting the region from tax. All right, no longer reliant from on food from England, the settlers are, can start amassing wealth and expanding Britain's colonies in America. Jamestown settlement has made a good start, but complacency is a dangerous thing. As word of the successful colonization of the New World it spreads, more people arrive from the Old World. Other European nations have taken note of your success. They too are looking to the new world with a view to possible expansion of their own interests, although vast these American lands are not endless, confrontation is inevitable. Alright, so that's basically the end of the chapter uh, for this one. And... Let's see. And now we proceed on to the next chapter, and here comes the storyline. As time went by, hostilities between the natives and settlers began to fade and more ships carrying the hopeful arrived daily. Over the next hundred years, the population swelled and the fight for territory began. Both the British and the French set their sights on the valuable Ohio Valley. And when the French built a line of forts across the valley, I was sent to demand the instant withdrawal of their troops. They refused and the British retaliated by sending an army under General Braddock to take the valley by force. I was unlucky enough to be an officer in that army. Braddock's limited knowledge of his surroundings and his refusal to listen to counsel led to his downfall. He marched us straight into a French ambush. Our men were massacred. The cries of the wounded still haunt my dreams. This terrible loss encouraged the British to take a closer look at the tactics and cunning employed by their native allies. Use of these warriors and their knowledge of the land would prove to be the key to claiming the Ohio Valley. The French have established a series of forts in the Ohio Valley. These forts are well defended and will be difficult to take through military force alone. Perhaps the Iroquois tribe to the north will provide you with some much needed assistance. All right, so that was like the story, the whole story, and about the ambush uh, made by the French that 
created this whole new escalation of conflict as the French also allied with a uh, Native American tribe. So that's why there was like a French and Indian war that was involved. And not only that, was there a British general that was a stubborn one that ended up refusing any advices from his other generals in particular and decided to try to take the valley by force and ended up getting destroyed in the process. So now we, I think now Great Britain has an excuse to at least expand further territories. Hence, now the main territories that they will try to at least obtain is the New France, which is uh, in Montreal, uh, so to speak, and basically almost all of Quebec at the end. And in history, it did result to the British winning the war. Uh, and at the same time, it will be on the colonial or uh, the colonist expense expenses. Uh, so that's why they started a whole series of taxes later on. We got Stamp Act. Uh, we got Sugar Act. Sugar Act, basically uh, taxes on sugar, etc. And you got further taxes that were laid on the colonists, which later on they got fed up, and therefore a new revolution started. And here we are to ally with the Iroquois in this case. So if we click on this diplomatic relations right here, where it's like a, a reef, once you click on that, I'm not sure if the uh, AI is going to speak, which I'm going to go ahead and just make it text i guess uh yeah text so basically you can also see the status of it um it says very friendly so uh sometimes they will have like hostile or so forth so you click on it and of course this you can also see who's uh who's this um faction is at war with so they're currently at war with the heroin which is located right up north uh at the elk Algonquin, Algonquin territory, and also with France right here. So let's go ahead and open negotiation. You can also request trade agreements. Sometimes uh, it's better to offer payments as well. You can offer trade agreement and also a military alliance. You can also threaten them, which some have done so uh, from what I've watched as well, but uh, it's never good to do so. Because sometimes it might end up backfiring you in the process. And especially in the long run in terms of the uh, faction relationship in this case. So now our objective is to take care of the Fort Niagara. Uh, which is located up northeast uh, or northwest from here. So right about here. The only issue is that uh, Fort Niagara uh, right here uh, has a path uh, in which we have to follow and that leads to this fort right here and this fort is fully is well occupied and in the process there is a possible ambush here too as well with full units from what i recall and that could be that could pose a problematic i tried at one point demanding surrender which they did and they end up moving up north which then created another issue which they were able to greatly reinforce Fort Niagara and it took quite some time to take care of it. And so that's why your best bet is to at least have two stacks uh, worth of men or units uh, to be able to counter these surprises along the way. So this is the fight against the across the rest of North America cannot continue until you achieve this mission. The only direct route to Fort Niagara is guarded by the heavily fortified Fort Dunsk. Although an alternative route may exist through force in Iroquois territory in engaging in diplomacy with the Iroquois and gaining military access through their lands may provide an easier route. Uh, which I kind of doubt in some ways. Uh, because, which we can try I guess. Um, let's see. It's possible to try to flank them from up north. I don't know if they will ever move their men up here that's the only issue i always have is that if i 
sometimes I might even leave this Fort Cumberland uh, unattended or perhaps even Virginia uh, unattended as well, which can pose it problematic. So that's why I, what I end up doing is going to a direct route directly to here. You can try going through the Iroquois territory and try to flank them uh, through this path here and into Fort Niagara. Most likely the case, they the army here might reinforce uh, Fort Niagara right here. So basically, either way, you're going to have to deal with this problem. So just a heads up on here. So over here, we have the sort of two sacks of units. We have the Colonial Light Cavalry, which is quite effective. Uh, abilities right here is can hide in woodland and good stamina. And of course, you can also see the recruitment cost, which is 433 gold, and upkeep cost is 144. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then we have at least four cannons. I try to at least delete some of these skirmishers, honestly, because uh these colonial skirmishers are never really that effective uh for this one if we upgrade the governor's residence right here we'll get three percent bonus plus one to re repression in the region which um diffuses or decreases the chance of it revolting of the civilians revolting in this case then we got recruitment capacity unit is one and we also have uh, it enables us to recruit more Native Americans, Musketeers, Colonial Militia. Line Infantry is the the best unit that you can get. Uh, Rangers are good for long distance firing. Think of them as snipers at that time. And 24 pounder uh, foot artillery. Those are pretty decent. So yeah, let's go ahead and upgrade that. Uh, then we'll take care, take as many of the line infantry. We'll also get some of the uh, Rangers as well. Right now, I don't have enough funds, unfortunately, so I can build a shipyard, which we can then transfer a lot of our troops up into this river later on and try to take care of, like, I think some of the other forts up here, which is going to be Fort... What should we call it? New France and also Montreal. We can do that, but just keep that in mind later on if you see Greenland right here or Louisville or Lewisburg, uh, basically you're going to see encounter like a whole fleet of brigantines right around this area uh, and you're probably also going to encounter a another set of fleet right around this area too so um, normally you'll probably get the fishery honestly just to increase your income and also the population growth and also your best bet is to also upgrade these uh, to get more income and for me personally we'll go ahead and group up all of our units and we'll go ahead and take a stab at it uh, honestly well uh, let's see how much time we got got at least 10 minutes uh, I need to get some sleep honestly uh, well I think we'll what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and, and just reserve it for next time we'll probably have to do two tries just in case uh, because I vaguely re recall how to at least take care of like a mass army like this size. This is like, already full capacity right here. And I'm already getting more units in the process too. At the ready. So, and also, let me also see what we can do. So, open negotiation, military access, indefinite, indefinite. Okay, perfect. So technically, we can go through this way. Hmm. I'm not sure if it will, if their units will be able to reinforce it. Later on, I'm gonna have to deal with this anyway. Ah, okay. We might as well deal with the problem over there. Okay. So let's go ahead and take care of that. And in the meantime, I think the furthest we can go, if. Uh, I wish I can like hold. Okay, there you go. Yeah. So if I hold with the right, right click button, you'll be able to like drag to see how far you can go. So the furthest I can go is up to this fort right here ish, or you can go to where Maryland, uh, Pastang, Pakistan, Maryland is at. But for many time, let's go ahead and reinforce this fort. And you can also recruit over here too, actually, which uh, makes it a lot more easier. So whenever you have a fort, you can always uh, recruit. 
and sometimes you can later on uh throughout later on the game after this chapter you can actually upgrade forts in particular but it will cost at least four or five thousand gold ish and i will just go ahead and end turn and now we'll be able to see what unit has been recruited and as well as uh we'll try to at least recruit uh more of the rangers slash line infantry and i only have 103 oh I, sh I just realized i should have at least upgraded the farms that would have been a better bet okay let's yeah this is gonna require a lot more time uh, especially when it comes to doing an all-out war against them so We'll go ahead and exchange, I guess. Waiting for your answer. Yeah, do a little exchange. We'll create like a separate army in this case, like a militia army and a infantry army, which will help out in the long run. And I think recruitment. I don't know how much uh, the upkeep cost at the moment is really adding up quite well. But yeah, we'll just go ahead and save, uh, which you can, uh, if you es click on the escape button, click on the save button, you can also create another slot. You can just like rename it, uh, just to make it a lot more easier. So let's say, uh, B France in this case. So yeah. So now you, when you load, it'll be a lot more easier. You can do B France or you, it'll automate, it will do auto save that you can also automatically click. Uh, for you to get back into the progress or action in this case. So, or you can also exit windows as well too. So yeah, uh, that's the gist of it for today. And uh, continuing forward next week or probably the following week, we'll be able to at least do a full out scale fort battle against the French. And hopefully we'll be able to at least uh, beat them by then. All right. Uh, all right, so nevertheless, thank you all for your time and uh, consideration in watching this Empire Total War uh, semi-tutorial gameplay uh, along the way. And I hope you found this information quite informative. And until next time, if you do enjoy this, uh, feel free to subscribe to get notified for more of these gameplays. And also, uh, if you by clicking like, it actually helps expose our content a little bit more and nevertheless uh, thank you all for your time and god bless each and every one of you peace out from samurai 12.